What's up you guys, it's Chris here. This is my homemade automatic bandsaw blade sharpener. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I built it, tell you everything you need to know if you wanna build one of these, including material lists, dimensions of everything, and how I assembled it, so stay tuned. All right, so I'm gonna start off by running through all the materials. I think right here is everything that I need to build it. There's four things that I had to buy on Amazon, one of which is the motor that's mounted on the back of here. It's a 12 volt DC, I think it's 16, yeah, it says 16 RPM on the side. I'll link everything in the description below too. And then you could run this motor off a 12 volt battery, but I just ordered a 120 volt AC to 12 volt DC uh, power supply. And then I ordered some bearings, and I ordered this adapter right here. And then the one other thing that I bought is the Harbor Freight Chicago Electric Chainsaw Sharpener. So starting off, you, there's a snap ring on the side of this pin here. You pop that snap ring off, pull the pin out, then remove the base from the chainsaw sharpener. This bracket is two inches by three and a half. These little tabs are two, inch, two inches tall by about three quarter inch wide. I don't remember what size hole that is, but I just measured it with the calipers and drilled out the holes. And I tried to weld these tabs on as far apart as possible so that it has as much, this sharpener has as much stability as possible. And then to mount this to the base plate, I've got this little guy here, which is two inches by three inches. And these little tabs are going to be about seven eighths of an inch by two inches. Tack weld this guy down and then I will drill a hole through this back piece and this piece here so that I can and put a bolt in it so that I can loosen up the bolt and pivot the sharpener to get the angle that I want. We'll move on to the lever piece here. This piece is to the center of where the bolt is, where these bearings are. We're looking at about seven and three eighths, seven and a quarter. We are three and a half wide. And this piece here is about three and three eighths, three and a half. All, that, all I did here is I just uh, drilled a couple holes through these tabs that I tacked on, put these bearings in through here so that uh, the bearings uh, spin on the bolt. I took a long bolt, cut off either end, and tack welded it onto the bottom of here and tack welded a couple little washers to act as an axle for this guy to pivot. And this right here is a, a piece of five inches long, uh, one inch square stock on the bottom. And then on the top, I just took that one inch square stock and I cut it down like this and cleaned it up a little bit. These bearings centered in the V-block of this uh, angle iron that's cut open. So that gives a really nice solid pivot point, especially once I tack this down. What else we got? The base plate here is 10 inches by 19 inches and that's just a piece that I had so I didn't even have to cut it. These two pieces were the chain guides that came with the Chicago Electric chainsaw sharpener. I just kind of tore the base apart and I'm going to use these as the blade guide. The grinding wheel starting off is seven inches across. I probably will end up cutting it way down but I just wanted to start big. This hole right here is what's going to grab and you'll see as I assemble it all together. This hole is going to be uh, what's going to grab the arm to index the blade tooth to tooth. Well, it is about, I believe it's about three quarters of an inch off the center of my cam wheel here. Yeah, right at three quarters of an inch. I had to custom make a bolt so that, you can see I had to cut out the back of the head so that it would fit and clear this mounting flange here. So this will get bolted onto here. And then motor mount is let's see i got five inches wide by six inches tall and i got a bottom piece on it that's about two and a half added a couple little pieces here just to give it a little stability and then i think i need it up a little higher so i cut a couple more pieces of square stock here that are each three inches so i think i might just tack them down underneath to give this guy a little bit more height and then this cam wheel attaches right onto this guy like so. This guy right here, I gotta turn that bolt down, but this guy right here will kind of ride like that. These guys will be mounted over here. Be mounted right up here. Depth screw on the uh, sharpener here will ride right in where I tacked a little washer on the end of this arm. Right just in there like that. Now what we're looking for. Index the blade forward. I've got this and I've got a couple little springs to add to this. This straight is uh, nine and three quarters and I'm stepping up about an inch and then over 
the two and an eighth and then stepping back down you know an inch and an eighth i might have to bend and kind of get it dialed in this piece right here has got two holes this is just a, a piece of uh, half inch stock that i i drilled two holes in this hole is this is a 10 mil bolt so this is a 10 mil hole to fit snugly on that bolt i don't know if snugly is a word but i used it and then through here is a uh, tapped this is tapped and threaded all the way through a tapped m8 bolt through here so this guy will run something in here and I'll use a spring to help uh, tension it. Basically, as you turn this threaded rod, you're going to slowly move the position of this forward and back. It's going to fine tune how far it indexes from tooth to tooth. I'm going to get to work tacking everything up. So whatever coating they put on this, I uh, made it so it didn't weld very well. So I just had to grind off plating that's on these pieces. And then I'm going to use a couple a couple washers here that are just a little bit thicker than the blade as spacers to space this out uh, when I tack these two pieces together. That looks pretty good. These might be a little bit too tall. I'm going to have to take the grinder and and grind down uh, where they're where it's grinding. The wheel is perfectly centered over the blade. And then actually use my brain here and mark where that's gotta go and then tack it in into place. Whoa! I think what I wanna do is just clamp this to it for now. Worry about where that hole's gotta go later. There we go, that's a pretty good start. Okay, for this next piece, I'm seeing a little bit of a design flaw. This peg is kind of dark, but this this peg going down is kind of on the inside. It's not sitting in the center of my washer. So I might have to add a little tab over here, coming this way, so to catch this threaded rod. I'm probably gonna set that right there and tack this bottom angle iron piece in right, right where it's at. Okay, I'm gonna change this up. I'm gonna cut this little washer off and I'm just gonna weld a flat tab on here because as this goes up and down, that this adjustment rod needs to slide back and forth just a little bit as it's coming up and down. With that washer there, it, it kinda can't. So I'm gonna change that up quick. All right, so I got this tab, this big flat tab welded on here and kinda polished down so it's kinda smooth. That actually gives me more room to uh, shift this guy over which gives a little more uh, clearance from the blade coming through here. But now when I push on this back, it moves up and down and slides real nice. You can see it slides back and forth. Hopefully that's not an issue. I'll probably put a little grease on that or something. Yeah, that seems to work pretty well. So now on to mounting the motor. Right in there looks good. There it doesn't look too shabby. I'm gonna tack it into place. All right, that's kind of the idea. I like where this guy is at right here. So I think it's time to drill and just bolt this in place. Oh, goodness gracious. Shoot, hopefully I didn't break anything. Let's clamp this down. Woo! That locked in place. Get a blade thrown up on here. It looks like I need to go a little bit more of an angle to match what this blade is at. So I'll make that adjustment real quick. That looks good. So I'll snug that up right there. I'm gonna go to the, the absolute max position, which would be the very top of the tooth right there. And then I'll go a little bit more. And then I'm gonna cut this cam wheel down to uh, that size. I got it mounted on here. Basically all you'll do is sand down material and change the shape of this because the shape of this cam wheel determines how far up or down the grinder is. I'm gonna get the indexer part 
in place and functioning. I have the uh, indexer arm put on. I had to make some adjustments to it. It seems to be working and it seems to be indexing well. Basically you adjust this screw. I have, you can see I have this shifted almost all the way forward so that when it's finished indexing all the way forward, the, and I'll get it to that point here, the stone is coming right down on the back side of the tooth. I also marked on here different points where it's going to be the start of the cut where the tooth, the wheel, grinding wheel drops, where it's at the very bottom and then where it's at the top of the, the gullet, kind of at the top of the back of the next tooth. So there's probably a better way to do this, but I think I'm just going to kind of wing it and just keep popping this off and grinding it down until I get roughly the shape that I need for this blade to follow the contour as this indexer is pushing it forward one tooth. So I have the cam wheel here taking shape. It's pretty close. I'll show you what it looks like over on the, the grinding wheel, but I've just been uh, taking it over to the belt sander and kind of trimming it down here and there and making markings where material needs to be taken away and where it looks like a good height. So I'll inch it along slowly here to uh, get an idea of how close the cam is to be in the correct shape. Go down. We go almost all the way down and then so when we're all the way down in the gullet it's a pretty good depth but then when we're coming up the back of this raker or this tooth it's a little high so we come down and we come pretty much all the way down and then we come up so from i'll start at the very bottom here so at this point right here here you can see i have a b marked which is the very bottom of the gullet so the bottom of the gullet is good but then as I inch it up, it jumps off the tooth. And so this right here is the very top of the tooth. So between the bottom here and the top, it's, it's rising too fast. I know I'm good in this area, and then I'm good all the way to here, and then I'm rising too quick. And so I'm just gonna take a little bit of material off right here. All right, so I think I got the shape of the cam wheel in, in a pretty good spot now. I did end up just starting to use the palm sander on just the little high spots. It's very very sensitive like you don't need to take much material off at all in order to make a difference but here i'll give you a look at what it looks like now and i think i'm about ready to try to uh turn the grinder on and see if uh see what it looks like when it's running So the moment of truth here, let's get this grinder plugged in and see what it looks like when it's running. So I must not have my cam wheel quite perfect. It's hitting a little heavy right at the bottom of the gullet here, right at the start of it. But to be honest, after you run this the same blade through here a time or two, the shape of this gullet will eventually match the profile of the cam wheel. So I'm not super concerned about it. It looks pretty good. So you can see the, the blade is cutting all the way down the face of this tooth and about halfway through the gullet. And then it's just missing the rest of the tooth up here. I'm mostly concerned about getting the face of the tooth and right down in here. I'll get you a better shot of it running here.
So it seems to be working all right. I'm pretty happy with it. I gotta build uh, tracks with these leftover bearings to help uh, guide the, the blade around in a circle. That's cutting a little heavier than I would like in spots, but I think I just gotta get rid of that factory profile. And once I get the, uh, the profile that's in this cam on all the teeth, I think the next time I run it, it'll be a much more a much more even and consistent grind all the way throughout the gullet. Uh, I'll be able to just just barely kiss the tooth with the grinding wheel and it should give a nice nice good sharpen. Thank you for watching everyone. I hope this video helps. If you guys got any questions at all, just drop a comment and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks.